people. How can we fix it? Right. I don't have a great answer, but I have my own solution, which I'm going to show you. But first, let's explain what's going on there. Why is that happening? So we are saying our transform and our transform position, and we are telling it a position. We are telling it where we want it to be. So no matter what the colliders are, no matter what else is in the scene, we are setting our transform. We are saying, absolutely, we want you here. We're not thinking about if it's a wall or not. We're saying, we want you here. So that's where transform breaks. Now, I've tried all the other variations of transform. Okay, if we go into transform, we'll see a couple of the other commands that we can use. Looking for transform translate. There it is. There. Okay. But here's another command that you can use. It pretty much works exactly the same as transform dot position. So I've never used it. But again, if we try and punch this in and use it, it will still walk through walls. So that doesn't fix the issue. As I said, the only solution I've managed to come up with with all my experimentation is to actually use rigid bodies. I mean, we're talking about physics, we're talking about collisions, we're talking about real things happening from real objects with weight, mass, density, and existence. They have colliders. So we need to turn this into a rigid body controller. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we can add a component. Physics, rigid body. Right, let's play around with that for a while. I'm going to take off the script. So our NPC is now just an object, but it has a rigid body. Let's drag him up into the air. Okay, I'm going to hit play. What happens there? Okay, he started to fall because we have a gravity option here. Okay. If I turn that gravity off, there we go, we're actually playing, nothing's happening, right? So use gravity, and there we have it. So it obviously has some kind of physics working here, and there we go. Even if I try to drag him around, look, he's rolling around, he's falling over. He's definitely a physical object in a real world situation. Now, first off, you saw him fall over, how can we stop that kind of thing happening? Give it a slight rotation, just so we can see when he falls, he rolls around. There we go. Now, on our rigid body component, we have these constraints. Now, these can be very useful if you want to use a rigid body to act with other objects, colliders. But we still want to have some kind of control. We don't want him rolling around like that. So let's just see what happens if we freeze up all the rotations. Hit play. Whereas before he hit the ground, whirled around, now we've frozen his rotation. Okay, we've frozen that. See that working. If I take the Z out, there we go, he's fallen down on his Z axis. So, rigid bodies I did personally find scary at the start, but there is a degree of control with them. And as we start to develop the script, you'll see how not scary they really are. Now, we've added a rigid body component to our MPC. So what can we do to our script? Actually, that's stepping ahead. Let's not worry about that now. Let's go back to the script and look at this movement as it currently is. Now, what I'm going to do is pull this out into its own function. Okay, so now this is moving. So when we turn this into a state engine, we already have a function for moving to call from our state. So that's just cleaning that up a bit. So every update, without a state engine, we're just going to be moving. And our moving currently involves a rotation and our movement direction. So this is a part that was causing issues, the trans setting the transform position. Now I'm mucking around with rigid bodies. I did okay first, how can we move a rigid body? 
Now, rigid bodies need to be moved in a fixed update. This is different from update. This is like a physics step. This happens at a different time to update. Let's even bring in the Unity scripting reference and let's call up Rigid Body. Let's see what it's all about. Control of an object's position through physics simulation. Okay, so we're looking for collisions and things like that. But here it is. When manipulating Rigid Body parameters, you should work inside the fixed update option. Physics simulation is carried out in discrete time steps. So that's just saying it works at a different pace to your update. There's more information. You can just click on these and have a look. But I'm covering the rigid body now. So basically, when we modify any of these variables that are available to the rigid body, it needs to be done in a fixed update. So let's just check. We have created a fixed update. That's excellent. Now, how can we modify a rigid body? How can we move a rigid body? There we are, I'm not seeing. Normally add faults. So let's just see what that does. Let's just have a bit of an experiment with that a rigid body and our faults. So while we've cached our transform component, we should also cache. A rigid body component. So again, our processor doesn't have to work so hard each update or each fixed update to find our rigid body component and then modify the variables of it. So this would be a type rigid body because that is the component. And then at the start, similarly as we found our transform. Our rigid body is this rigid body or this game object rigid body. So there we are, we've cached that. So now to our add force. So our rigid body, add force, and what are we looking for? We're looking for force as a vector 3. Okay, so we've got our forward as a vector 3, and let's use our move speed as a multiplier just to add a bit more force to that. Save that out. Now, we're not using position for movement anymore, so we're commenting that out. Alright, so all the update is doing is calculating in our moving rotation. Okay? And then every fixed update, we're adding force. Let's see what happens here. Okay, now I did previously save this scene. Let's just load the scene up again. So he's in position, but if we check, we have the scripts back, but we don't have the rigid body component. This is something I'm denied about a second ago. I will show you this now. How can we make this script smarter? This script is going to be using a rigid body component. So whatever the script is attached to, we need a rigid body. But what if we forget to put one on, just like we have here? Our special function, special command, special call. Require component. Now we have it. Let's you add automatically the required component as a dependency. Now this script is dependent on having a rigid body. We know it'll break if we don't have one. So how does this work? And script require component. Oh, there's a rigid body example right there. Fantastic. Where does this live? We pop this in at the top, right under the program script. There we have it. This script requires a component that is a rigid body. Let's save that out. Now let's watch what happens in Unity. Okay. It wasn't quite what I expected. Let's just take away the script. 
now we see all we have is the MPC with the mesh, the collider, and our material. Let's add our MPC script again. There we go. Now we see our script requires this component, so it has been added automatically. So that saved us some time. That's excellent. Now, I also talked about these freeze rotations. So how can we make our script smarter and do that for us? Back to the rigid body component. Here we have freeze rotation. Okay, so that's just a true or false setting. So obviously that's going to work for all three variables on that vector three for the rotations. You see what I mean? X1, Z. So let's punch in at the start. We've got access to our rigid body. Let's just say my rigid body freeze rotation equals true. Okay, so I've added a lot of things in, but we are going to get back to the add force. So this is ensuring the script does have a rigid body attached when you first drag it on. And then we're freezing the rotation here, so he's not going to roll around like he was before. And then back to how do we move a rigid body. We're first looking at add force. So now I do have this object set up how I want, so let's save the scene. Let's hit play. Ah, there we go, that's what I was saying. At the moment our script does not look for a target, so if we don't put one here in the inspector, it's going to break every time. So our target is our player. Save the scene. Now we hit play. Okay, so we have rotated to look to our player. There's our add force. And look, we hit the wall. And it's not going any further. That move speed's quite low. So we're adding force. It's quite a different value. But that's what I wanted to show you. I don't know if you can see that. If I drag him out and give him longer to move, Let's see what happens. It starts off slow. He's picking up speed. He's getting faster and faster. Okay. Let's even move the player and the wall right back. So add force is compounding. Each time we call add force in fixed update, it's adding more force to the rigid body or to the velocity of the rigid body. Now I mentioned velocity. Let's have a look at that. Rigid body, velocity. Now it does mention here you shouldn't modify this directly as you can have unrealistic behavior. We are modifying the behavior to our needs. So we're getting realism as far as our collisions are working. So I'm quite happy to modify velocity for that purpose. So back to our script. This add force is just multiplying and multiplying. It's getting faster and faster over time. So that's not working. What we need to do is we need to calculate the desired velocity. How fast and in what direction do we want our rigid body to move? Now this is a vector 3. And I'm going to make that private because it's something that the script uses and it's not something that we assign. So, how can we calculate a velocity and then apply it to our rigid body? Let's just punch that in first. My rigid body Private. My rigid body dot velocity equals what we want to calculate our desired velocity. Now currently that's nothing. So we want to calculate it. Now there was an interesting relationship I noticed between using the transform position like this 
and using this information in velocity. So let's just say, let's comment that out again. Let's say our, divide, our desired velocity equals our transform forward times our move speed. So here we have it. We have a vector 3 and we've multiplied our vector 3 by our speed, how fast we want that to move. So we've calculated the desired velocity here. Now this will be stored in our global variable. So when we fall down to our fixed update, whatever the last calculation for desired velocity will be applied. Okay? So let's test that out. Let's bring our character a bit further away. Let's hit play. So there we go. He's turned and rotated and faced the player. But unlike using transform position, the first collider he's met in his way is actually a physical obstacle. Okay, that's stuck. That's set. There we go. I'm really excited to show you this because I was very scared of rigid bodies at first, but as you can see, they're actually just as easy to manipulate as modifying the transform position. Almost exactly the same. We're getting our desired result. Lift them up in the air. Look. There we have it. Now you may ask, when we have gravity turned on, why, when we lift him up in the air, does he not fall down? That'll be in the next video.